Uh, I'm so excited about Waterloo, Iowa. A lot of people say, why are you excited about Waterloo, Iowa? Because we have been here 12 years in a row. Amen. This is our 12th crusade in the fall. And with me today is Jennifer Randall. And uh, Jennifer Randall, uh, I just want to introduce her as a trophy of God's grace. Amen. So just give me a high five. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that I, um, I love to hear about stories about people who have received Christ at a strength team crusade, made a decision in their heart for the Lord, and then to come back one year later and find out what the Lord has done. And uh, the Lord's done a lot in your life, hasn't he? Yes, he has. He's done a great deal in my life. He's completely changed my life, um, made me a new creation. In this last year, what do you think? you think it's been a big change? Oh, it's been a huge change. I've changed completely who I was. like from inside out, but the biggest part of me that changed was the inside, you right. know, he changed the desires of my heart, he changed, um, he renewed my mind, you know, and he just completely changed my desires, my wants, you know, I... Well, I'm going to give the, the listening audience a little bit of a, a background uh, of the change. Um, many of you watch Women of Strength podcast, which is my wife's podcast, which my wife is a tremendous influence to you the young women all over the country, but um, my wife, uh, one of the things that she battled in her life is with drug addiction, and that was to a drug called Vicodin. She was addicted to it for five years. She went through many programs. Um, finally, Teen Challenge was a great program that she spent 11 months in. Um, and basically, Jennifer, that's kind of your story. Um, right. You became, um, and I'm gonna let you tell your story. I, my wife's always like, tell your everybody's story <laughs> and so I'm gonna kind of let you tell your story just uh, okay. um, really about something that destroys people's lives and right. I, I know this for a fact in Anne's story and the reason why we're interviewing you today is to share that you are a trophy of God's grace in this last year from the time you committed your heart to the Lord mm -hmm. last year at the strength team event and then one year later she's she's clean for one year this week man that's something that's awesome to see her be a new person in Christ. And so, um, so tell, what, what, what did the Lord do? I mean, what, what was the struggle like? You know, what was, when did it start? When did it stop? What happened? Well, I started, um, you know, partying, using a lot, you know, hanging out with the wrong crowd of people. And when I was about 14 years old, that's where my life really took a change. And how old are you now? I'm 28 years old right now. Mm -hmm. So I, I used from the time that I was 14 to I was 27 years old. Uh, and it just took control of my life for 14 years mm -hmm. through high school. You know, it started out as fun, you know, and as a party, something to do with my friends. And, you know, it just got out of control, you know. It and what was just the grew drug? and what grew was, and grew and grew. Drug? I know it went from different kinds of drugs, but. It started out with alcohol and then marijuana. And then I started using cocaine a little bit. And then within a couple of years, I was using methamphetamine and then. Um, by the time I was 20, I was using methamphetamine and cocaine intravenously, mm -hmm. um, shooting up meth and cocaine on a regular basis every day. I had a habit of uh, about an eight ball a day, and um, it just took control of my life. There's times, you know, where I should have been dead. It's by the God's grace, like you said, that I'm even alive. I went on high-speed chases with the police, um, ran into a huge pole going 110 miles an hour. Um, people I know were murdered because of drug deals I was involved in that went bad. Um, times that I've overdosed and, you know, was in the hospital. They didn't know if I'd make it. I had to call my mom, you know, and tell her that her daughter was in the hospital. You know, and my mother, I, I'd given hope up on hope, you know, given up on myself that there was any hope. I'd been in and out of rehabilitation centers, 14 different rehabs. I started going to rehab when I was 14 years old. Most of the time, I couldn't even stay in a 28-day rehab. I could. Ne I never stayed clean more than a month on my own. Never. What was it like for your mom and dad? I was. I know that from the other side, addiction doesn't just hurt. Because you know, when Ann went through her addiction, it, it was just on us and the kids. It was tough, and so yeah. we loved Ann so much. She's my wife, and we've been married for 28 years, and she's been clean for eight years, November 7th, and we're excited about that. Amen. Praise but, the Lord. Um, what was it like on the family? I mean, let I me mean, just. It had to be hard on her not knowing where I was at or what I was doing or if she was going to get a phone call saying that I was dead. 
that I was in the hospital or that I was in jail, you know, because she had so many times. She didn't know. I mean, uh, she, my dad had told me about how many nights that she stayed up just praying for me mm -hmm. and just at her wit's end, just not knowing what to do with me, you know, because she tried so many things, tried to get me help and nothing worked, nothing ever worked. And she was to the point where, you know, she didn't know what else to do. It was, you know, she was about to the point where she had to just let me go, you know, because she, she couldn't do it. She couldn't do it to herself anymore, to my family anymore. And it was very hard on her. Man, I can't. I, you know, um, it's, um, it's painful. I mean, it would, you know, because when you see somebody that you love, it's um, right. like self-destruct. Right. You know, my wife tried to kill herself twice. And, uh, you know, I mean, I can just relate to the side from the other side. We went to Al-Anon. We went to, you know, all the different meetings mm -hmm. to how to, you know, deal with somebody who's in addiction. But the, the thing I really want to get towards and really the good news is that um, a year ago when we were here, we, the, you know, like I said before, the strength team, we've been here in Waterloo 12 years in a row. And this is our, this is our 12th year. And our, in our 11th year, you came here last year, this very same week. Right. So you're so what happened when you when you came here the day you came here what happened? I um, I'd been up for about a week on mm -hmm. methamphetamine, cocaine, marijuana, you name it. Mm -hmm. I, I did it and I'd been up for about a week and a half and my mom got me to come here to the strength team. Mm -hmm. What did she say? We say, hey, why don't you go to church with us? We they got these guys breaking. So <laughs> I thought she was crazy. Yeah. I just. You know, she really had to try to convince me to come, and I really didn't want to. I tried to talk her out of it. I didn't want to go, and, you know, why should I go to church when I'm living like this? You know, I'm, I'm not living right. But. That's the cool thing about the strength team is sometimes, you know, people that normally wouldn't go to church, if they were to just said, hey, there's this guy right. speaking, you wouldn't have came. I mean, you no way. But, hey, there's guys breaking bricks and running through ice and doing mm -hmm. all the crazy stuff we do it's kind of right. appealing mm -hmm. and so you came here and it was kind of exciting to see the show and yeah. and uh but what was what do you think was the thing in the message i mean I, I and i and i know that i talked about my wife's story that night jennifer told me that i talked about ann's story about the addiction and what she went through and uh, how hard it was and how god set her free and but what do you what did the lord do in in, in your heart that night i know in your heart god did something i think he gave me some hope for a change. I know I was desperate. My mom was desperate. And I kind of, you know, hit my rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I knew that night that the Lord had to be the only way because I tried everything else. And it was really my last option. You know, my last, my last hope was the Lord, which really should have been my first, my first thing. But yeah. I guess the Lord had to take me through what he had to take me through to bring me to where I am today and to use me how he wants to use me, you know, and um, he just changed my heart. He gave me hope that night awesome. by hearing your wife's testimony and hearing you speak. Well, and here's the thing about it, because there's a lot of people pray for God's help, but I think you had to do something. There was a surrendering. Right. When you surrender your heart to the Lord, when you just say, God, you know, being a Christian is dying to yourself to become alive in Christ. And then 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, for anyone who is in Christ, is a new creation. Old things pass away, everything becomes brand new. So there had to be a point in your life where you asked that night to ask Christ to come. You open up the door of your heart. Right. I know you, you prayed a prayer in your heart that night. Right. And uh, you know, whether you came forward, you didn't. You came, you, 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 in your heart, you made a decision mm -hmm. in your heart for the Lord. You repented of your sins. God came into your heart. And in a year's time, what, what, what's God done? I mean, what are you doing now? I teach Sunday school now. I teach Sunday school um, I love it. for a couple of pastors that kind of really helped me through this whole thing. And uh -huh. um, I went to the Midwest Mission Bible Training Center for nine months, and that really helped me to get me, you know, built me up and gave me strength. Right. You know, and they fed, they feed you the Word of God. I mean, morning, right. noon, and night is just the Word of God, Word of God, mm -hmm. and that helped me a lot. It's changed the way I thought to say, okay, this is how I'm supposed to walk, to right. build me up, to strengthen me, you know what I mean? So would you, th would you say that you are a recovering drug addict, or would you say that you're a set-free drug addict? I'm a set-free believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. 
and not even don't even claim to be an addict anymore. No, I'm not. No, I'm delivered. <laughs> yeah, and that's. I think there's a difference there. I think, right. and you know, I'm not trying to take anything away from, you know, the 12 step or you know, because you know that works for some people. But I know, a lot of people that are recovering addicts, and they and, you know, and they that's a weakness for them. But then I, my wife's story is that she's a set free. She set free from it, and that was not her identity. Her identity is in Christ, and so exactly. when, when you asked the Lord last year to come in your heart, the Strength Team event, it was like your identity was not Jennifer of your past, of all your mistakes, all your faith, all your failures, things that you've done wrong. Right. But but you're a new creation in Christ. Right. Right. I I remember that night. I said, Lord, if you want me to change, you got to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, because you tried to change. Because I own. tried a million times. I tried <laughs> on my own strength, and every See, I can relate. <laughs> and I would fail over and over again because I hated the way I was living. Yeah. I hated what I was doing. I hated the person that I'd become. Yeah. But I didn't know how to change on my own, and I tried to change on my own, but I just couldn't do it on my own strength. Yeah, and the good thing about it is that look at you are look where you are today. One mm -hmm. year later. And the reason I wanted you to be on the podcast today, and okay. this is the big thing, is, is that I want your story to get out to people all over the country that watch the strength team. We go to city to city, place to place, and a lot of people watch the strength team program. A lot of people watch my wife's program, and your story is a story uh, that a lot of people need to hear. Right. And so Romans 8.28 says, God causes all things to work together for good if okay. we love them and we're called according to his purpose. Well. In your life, everything you've gone through in your past, how can you call that good? You know, it's not. Yeah, but it's brought me, it's all been little pieces of the puzzle yeah. that have brought me to where I am today. And like, I'm going to Iowa School of Ministry now, and I want to be a substance, Christian substance abuse counselor, you know, and help people that have mm. gone through what I went through, you know, and lead them to Christ and, you know, give them hope like you gave me at the strength team that night with your wife's story. Mm -hmm. and. You know, it's, but I have to give all the glory to the Lord, yeah. all the glory to God. Well, and, 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 you know, he'll take your situation to where, you know, for a long time you were a victim, but now you're a victor. Right, that victor, victorious. Test, all of the tests and the trials has become a testimony, and all of your mess has become a message. And right. so that's the way God works. He does that. And so it's just a wonderful thing. And so I'm so proud of you. Thanks. And I'm so glad that we had the time just to talk. And um, Amen. Man, you know, just keep going for God. Amen. You know what I'm saying? There's so many, God wants to use you. The Bible talks about Matthew 5, I think it's 13. It says, let your light shine before people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And so that the light of God would shine to affect, I mean, people you know, even right. probably in your old, you know, sometimes you run into people in your old life. It's like, man, you made it. You changed. Right, right. You got a different look about you. You probably look a lot healthier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> than you did a year, a year ago, you know what I'm saying? If you took a picture now and then before, just see, you know, what the lo Lord's doing in your life. And, and so it's awesome. I'm, I'm proud of you. I really Thank am. Thank you. I, and you are a trophy of God's grace. And we're thankful for God. And we, we, we don't, strength team, we don't take any credit here for what we did. But this is what Jesus did. Amen. And we want to give all the glory to God for that. And so just mm -hmm. want to give you a little high five. Right. God bless you. And Amen. thank you for watching. Thanks.